functions and also we're going to prove that the trig functions also work on our special triangles the 45's and the 30's, 60's, 90's. We're also going to work on reading the directions. For acute angle A of a right triangle, find tangent A by using the 45, 45, 90 triangle theorem or the 30, 60, 90 triangle theorem. Okay, for this first one we're told to use a 30 degree angle. So that goes with our 30, 60, 90 triangle theorem. So we're going to start by drawing the 30, 60, 90 triangle. It doesn't really matter if it's accurate as long as you've labeled it correctly. And you're going to put in your reference numbers or your multipliers that you would use on this kind of triangle, which would be 1, 2, root 3. And remember that the 2 always goes with the hypotenuse. Okay, and we're to use a trig function, I mean a tangent function. Okay, so we're going to say the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to, when we look back at our mnemonic, so katoa, we know that for tangent we need opposite over adjacent. So we're going to write tangent 30 degrees is equal to 1 over root 3. Okay, that's a ratio between the short side, or the short leg, and the long leg. And then when we put this into a calculator, I'm going to key it into two different kinds of calculators for you so that you can see how to work them. One divided by, now in a Casio, which is most of your non-graphing calculators will work this way, the Texas Instruments are the ones that go in the same order that you see. So you're going to put in one divided by three, shift, square root. Now that gave you the square root of three. It did not give you the answer to your problem. Okay, then you press the equals button. The ratio between those two legs is 0.57735. Now we're usually going to take this to four decimal places. That means four numbers beyond our decimal point. So that would be 0.5774 when we round it. So that's equal to 0.5774. Now to use the, ca the, the Texas Instruments to do this, we will press 1 divided by second function square root 3 and we'll press equals and we have 0.57735 also. Okay now to show you that this really does work we're going to put in tangent 30 and compare our answers so that would be on the Casio you put in the 30 first and then you put in tangent and it gives you the answer 0.57735 and over here we're going to put it in the same order that it comes on your paper which is tangent 30 enter 0.57734 so it works either way alright for a 45 degree triangle Your multipliers are 1, 1, and root 2. Okay, so for this one, the tangent of 45, remember in Sokotoa, and don't even hesitate to write this down at the top of your test paper, whatever you're working at, so that you have it there as a reminder. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So looking at our 45 degree angle, we go directly opposite. Remember your root 2 always goes with the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is never an adjacent side, so we're going to say opposite 1 over adjacent 1. So it just equals 1. Okay, we don't even need to key that into the calculator. But watch this. Let's put in tangent 45. Okay, on the Casio it's 45 tangent. We get 1. On the Texas Instruments it's tangent 45 and we get 1. And that shows you all of these are programmed right into your calculator. Now back in the olden days, we had to look on a table to find them. It's, the calculator is working just like it does when you say 4 times 4. The, the calculator is not doing anything special with that, but it's been programmed to know that 4 times 4 is 16.
Okay, let's use the tangent ratio to actually find a side. And I'm going to show you two ways to do this. Okay, this says use the tangent ratio to find the value of x. And we have 64 is our, our um, angle. So we're going to say tangent of 64 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is 17, over the adjacent side, which is x. Now this side we don't know, but it's our hypotenuse anyway, so we can't use it. Not for tangent. We can use it for sine and cosine, but not for tangent. All right, using algebra, we know that to get the x out of the denominator, you're going to multiply both sides of your equation by x. Now we need to get x by itself because you want x equals. So we're going to divide by tangent 64 degrees. Okay, to key this into the calculator, on a Casio it looks like this. 17 divided by 64 tangent. Now that's the tangent of 64. So we have to press equals. 8.29. Now this is the side that we're looking for. We're not looking for a ratio like we were up here. That takes four digits because the ratios are very, very close together for each of these degrees. 0 0.5774, 0 0.5882. Those would all round to the same thing, 0 0.6, and it really wouldn't tell us anything. But when we're dealing with sides, going to the tenths place is good enough. So we're going to round it at the tenths place and we get 8.3. So x is equal to 8.3. Now some of you have that Texas Instruments and you're saying, how do I key that in there? All right, you're going to key that in by saying 17 divided by tangent 64 equals 8.29, which is 8.3. All right, now another way to do this, some of you don't like to have to multiply both sides by x and then divide by tangent 64. So what you could do is you could say, I know this is a 90 degree angle and this is the rest of the 90 degrees because a triangle has 180 degrees, minus 64. So you could say 90 minus 64 equals 26. This is a 26 degree angle here. And you can use the tangent ratio on that angle as well. Now sometimes the instructions will say double check your answer by doing the tangent of the other angle. So we're going to do that. Now one of the things you have to know about trig ratios is that if you clear the calculator at certain places, you'll get slightly different answers and sometimes it matters more than others and we'll try to cover that as we go along. Alright, so we're going to write on our paper the tangent of 26 degrees is equal to, we don't know x, or let's pretend we don't know x, x over 17 degrees. Now the advantage of doing this is that now all I have to do is multiply both sides times 17 to get my answer. Okay, so I would say 17 times 26 tangent now that's the tangent of 26, so you got to remember to press equals. 8.29. Notice our, I think our number is just slightly different. Notice when we did it on the Texas Instruments, we still have it up here. It's 8.29, oh, 145, never mind. It's not even a little. Huh. Okay, so we get 8.3. Remember on the Casio, it's going to be whoops, on the Texas Instruments, it's going to be 17 times tangent 26 equals. Okay, so we will come to some of those cases, I promise you, where they're a little bit different and it depends on where you clear your calculator. For instance, if we were to do tangent 26, and some people do this, 26 tangent, and you were to write down 0.4877. When you get rid of the 32588, and then when you multiply this by 17, which is what we were just doing, so you say, oh, 0.4877, that's what I had up there, right? Times 17. Okay, now you've got a different number. It's a little bit different from what we were looking at. It still rounds to 8.3. Okay? Alright, this one says, 
<clears throat> find the ta tangent ratio. Use a tangent ratio to find the value of x. Still says the same thing we're to do. All right, we want to make sure that we don't have to multiply both sides by x and then divide. So let's look at what we have here. If we use our 43 degree angle, we're going to have our 36 on the top and our x on the bottom because it's opposite over adjacent. We don't want to do that. So we're going to say 90 minus 43 equals 47. Now sometimes you have to do it, you have no choice, but we have a choice, so we're going to exercise our choice. And we're going to say tangent 47 is equal to x over 36. Now, some of you are going to say, okay, I'm always going to be multiplying by that. And if you want to just write this equation and then tell me x and not actually have to write it out, I'm okay with that as long as you're getting your answers correct. But I want to see the equation you started with. Okay, so we're going to multiply both sides by 36, so the 36 will cancel. And we're going to say 36 times 47 tangent, because we're using the calculator. Now that's the tangent of 47, so we have to press equals. And we get 38.6. Because we're doing a side, an actual side and not a ratio, we're going to go ahead and round it to the nearest tenth. We're also going to stop and do a reality check. Does it make sense that this side would be 36 and this one be 38? This is the larger angle. It should be across from the larger side. So yes, that makes sense. Okay, moving along. All right, here we have the tangent of 23. Well, look at this one. We say, oh, our x is already on the top because TOA tells us tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side is already x. It's already on the top of our fraction. So tangent of 23 degrees is equal to x over 53. We multiply both sides by 53 and we get 53 times 23 tangent. That's the tangent of 23. Now if you were to get this answer and write down 42447, one way you could tell you forgot to hit equals is to say this one's going to be 53 and this one's going to be less than half? I don't think so. That can't be a right answer. So we're going to press equals and we get 22, 22.49, which rounds to 5, 22.5. Okay, reminder of how to key this in to the Texas Instruments. 53 times tangent 23 equals 22.49.